Hi everyone, this is a follow-on video to the testing I did comparing analog, shark bite and DJI video systems for latency using my high-speed camera. If you've not seen that video, I'll put a link to it down in the video description. A lot of the people who watched that video commented that they'd love to see a comparison between the LCD screen in the Onway Commanders that I used for that test and one of the new OLED screens that you might find in the Fatshark HDOs or the Skyzone Sky 04X. So that's the comparison we're going to do today. Let's get into it. So I think with that video, you can see that there is a clear advantage to OLED in terms of pixel response time. Based on some analysis of the footage, I think that the LCD display in the Omway Commander V1 takes about 10 milliseconds to reach peak brightness and about 8 milliseconds to 90%. In comparison, the OLED display takes much less than a millisecond. In fact, some literature I read online said that OLED displays typically reach peak brightness in around 0.1 milliseconds, so it's extremely fast. And you can see what that difference means by looking at this graph. The LCD display takes a while to get started, to start changing, and then it changes relatively quickly over a few milliseconds, and then it takes quite a long time to get to fully bright. Whereas OLED, in a very short space of time, it reaches peak brightness. You can also see that in the footage as a sort of smudge on the LCD display, as you have lines that have been updated but have not yet fully changed, compared to the OLED display, which really interestingly has this black bar that precedes the new line being drawn. And I'm not sure why this black bar exists, but I wonder if it might be to do with an issue with OLED called image retention, where if a pixel has been on with the same color very bright for a long time, it sometimes kind of retains that color even if you tell it to do something else. And I wonder if having a black bar that just precedes the new line being drawn gives every pixel on the screen just a small amount of time to rest between each frame and thus reduce the likelihood of getting that image retention. If anyone is a, an expert on OLED displays and knows why this black bar exists, if you could leave a comment down below, I'd really appreciate it. I would argue that based on this high speed testing, there is clearly a latency advantage for OLED. It definitely can't be more than about eight milliseconds and perhaps three to five milliseconds is more reasonable. But when we consider that the fastest analog cameras, like the one that I used for this test, have about 19 milliseconds to full field and 33 milliseconds to full frame, that four milliseconds is really significant. And at this point, a lot of people ask, you know, does three milliseconds or five milliseconds or eight milliseconds really matter? Does, does the human eye respond that quickly? Can you respond that quickly? And what I would say to that is that I'm a really strong believer in a principle called marginal gains, which I think was originally publicized by the UK Olympic cycling team, which is that every percentage point of improvement that you can get matters. Every 1% matters. If you can save, you know, 1% of the latency on the camera and 1% of the latency in the video transmitter and 1% of the latency in the goggles, well, suddenly you've got a 3% improvement. And it doesn't sound like a lot. But then you consider that in a multi-GP race, the difference between first place and fifth place is about 3%. So I would say that particularly if you're racing, but also for freestyle flying, consider that principle of marginal gains and look for every percentage point of improvement that you can get everywhere along the chain. Because they all add up. And sometimes the differences between winning and not even placing are smaller than we think. And they're just a few percent. So that's, uh, that's my thought on it. For those of you who are thinking of investing in an OLED goggle to take advantage of that improved latency, I've prepared this rundown of some popular options. 
If you're just looking to use the goggle with analog cameras, the important numbers to be aware of is that NTSC cameras have 480 vertical lines of resolution and PAL cameras have 576 lines of vertical resolution. And you're going to want at least that many vertical lines of resolution in your goggle display so you're not throwing away that detail. And unfortunately, that discounts our budget OLED option, the SkyZone Sky 020, because with only 400 vertical lines, that's not enough to fully reproduce either the 480 lines that we get from NTSC or the 576 we get from PAL. And that's why I would recommend one of these two options, either the Sky 030 or the Eosheen EV300. These both have 1024 by 768 screens, and that 768 lines of resolution is going to be plenty to accurately reproduce the detail from either NTSC or PAL. However, we are now entering the age of digital, and so we have to consider the SharkBite system as well. Now, the SharkBite or HD0 system has a resolution of 1280 by 720 pixels. And we're going to want at least that many in order to faithfully reproduce the image that the VTX is sending us. And in that case, I would recommend either the SkyZone Sky 04X or the FatShark HD02. They both have 1280 by 960 screens, and so they have enough resolution to faithfully reproduce the image from SharkBite. I'll put links to where you can buy all of my recommended options down in the video description. There'll be affiliate links, which means that if you click those links and then buy anything at the affiliated store, I get a small commission and it's a way you can help support the channel and it doesn't cost you a penny. I'm planning to use these OLED goggles and my high speed camera to compare the latency of different analog cameras. I was pretty surprised by the initial results, so make sure you're subscribed so you see that video the moment it comes out. If you like the work that I do and would like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon. You can join for just a few bucks a month and you get access to a Discord server and advance notice of when I launch new frames. The next one to come out is the AOS 5R. Very exciting. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.